I've become accustomed due to so many studies pointing in one direction to seeing the Mediterranean diet do all kinds of good for human health. But today may be an exception, at least in a relative sense. I've been doing uh, more research into arthritis lately, and according to one randomized controlled trial, another diet, a low-carbohydrate diet, may be the antidote to arthritis that the Mediterranean diet is not. We'll get into why, as well as what to take away from this study, because there are some intriguing reasons why. Psoriasis is the most common auto-inflammatory disease in the world, and it's a multifactorial condition, as with many, but it's generally characterized as an overactivation of immune cells, especially T helper cells and Th17 T cells. So these are part of our more specialized adaptive immune system that invade into our skin, as one site at least. Once activated, these uh, cells mass produce inflammation molecules called cytokines like interleukin-1, interleukin-6, 23 for dendritic cells, 22, 17, and other cytokines. This uh, overproduction of these molecules leads to hyperproliferation and angiogenesis. In uh, more understandable terms, mass production of skin cells, so keratinocytes, that leads to the buildup of immature skin cells, creating that scaly plaque looking uh, formation on the skin that some people experience in psoriasis. Now, the relationship to arthritis is a similar infiltration that can occur in the joints leading to the activation of synoviocytes, cells in the joint responsible for producing the lubricating fluid in your joints called synovial fluid, as well as collagen and different uh, proteins that make up your joint structure. If these cells proliferate aggressively, they can form a much thicker layer in the joint that invades into the cartilage and pushes against the bones, breaking down those structures to make room, in effect. So it disturbs the integrity of the joint. So the big picture is if we can reduce this uh, specific inflammatory cascade surrounding these T cells, we might be able to prevent these skin and joint issues from happening. So in this study, the researchers recruited overweight people with psoriatic arthritis in their 50s and had them follow two diets. So for eight weeks, they were instructed to consume a ketogenic or very low carbohydrate diet. And then they did a washout where they returned to their previous diet for six weeks. And after those six weeks, they were placed on a Mediterranean diet. This is called a crossover design because the same participants are exposed to both diets. We'll discuss some nuances of both diets later on as well. So the researchers measured uh, a bunch of inflammatory cytokines before and after each diet, as well as even more importantly, arthritis symptoms. Unsurprisingly, both diets led to significant improvements in weight, fat mass, visceral fat, improved liver enzymes, and more. But there were largely no differences between groups. And that's important because whatever differences we might see between the diets on the psoriatic arthritis front would speak to the direct effects of the diet components, not due to the additional weight loss or some other factor. Okay, now, if we start with the arthritis symptoms measured by two scales, the psoriasis area and severity index, or the PASI, and the disease activity index of psoriatic arthritis, or DAPSA, the lower the score, the less symptoms, and the better the quality of life. Looking at that data, we have the baseline measurement before being on either diet, on the left side, and then the MD for the Mediterranean diet, KD for the ketogenic diet. And if the p-values there go under 0.05, that means that there's a statistically significant identified effect. So when comparing the baseline against the Mediterranean diet, the diet provided no benefit. We'll return to that in just a bit. However, when comparing the ketogenic diet, in both measures, the ketogenic diet reduced arthritis symptoms. Then, although not shown here, but shown here, Comparisons between the two diets also indicate a ketogenic advantage. Now, if we return to these data, people with a bit of stats knowledge will likely notice the extremely large lines here. Now, in many studies, those would be standard error measurements. And for standard error, those are huge. But they're actually reporting standard deviation. So the uh, spread of the data, which is wider than standard error. Anyway, the point remains that this study was small, only 16 individuals. So it's possible that we're missing an effect in the Mediterranean diet that we'd see if we'd even doubled the number of people in the study, since we'd be increasing the amount of data that we could input. Regardless, it seems unlikely that we'd lose this keto advantage. Still, there are some nuances to the keto diet that we'll need to address shortly. 
We have a lot more to cover, including uh, why the ketogenic diet is able to improve psoriatic arthritis, but I'm going to be going into more in depth in the full version of this video, which is available for the Physionic Insiders, along with uh, detailed written breakdowns, uh, shortened summaries, a private podcast, live sessions with me, and more. If you're interested in having access to uh, complete access to all my research, along with joining a community of people who follow a series of different diets, including ketogenic, uh, Mediterranean, and more, check out the uh, Physionic Insiders in uh, the description box. So one thing the researchers point out is that a major ketone, a molecule produced by a very low carbohydrate diet like ketogenic, can inhibit something inside our cells called the inflammasome. The inflammasome is a complex of proteins that activates a pro-inflammatory protein called a caspase. This caspase, specifically caspase 1, cleaves immature pro-inflammatory cytokines, like the ones that we discussed earlier. And it turns them into their final form, golden frieza. <laughs> no, their fully mature version, like a fully functional interleukin protein. The ketone beta-hydroxybutyrate reduces the formation of this inflammasome complex by blocking one of its adapter proteins from forming. That may offer a specific advantage of the ketogenic diet versus the Mediterranean diet. Like I said, I'll be describing more on the mechanisms in the full version of this video, but that's the most unique one in relation to ketogenic diets. Of course, all this is contingent on us seeing actual reductions in these inflammatory molecules, like we discussed since they are the origin source, or close to it, of this psoriasis and arthritis effect. So, what happens? Well, looking at interleukin-6 on the left and interleukin-17 on the right, we clearly see that the ketogenic diet reduces both, yet the Mediterranean diet fails to do so. This is also the case when looking at other interleukin measurements, but surprisingly, the researchers didn't measure interleukin-1, which is the primary interleukin produced by the inflammasome pathway that we just went over. It would have really been nice to see instead of speculating on the mechanism. Now, I did mention some additional details related to these diets and some context to be applied. Okay, so the ketogenic diet specifics weren't made overly clear, but the researchers did encourage unsaturated fats like olive oil. So it might be reasonable to assume, although unconfirmed, that the ketogenic diet leaned toward unsaturated fats instead of saturated fats. In addition, they did emphasize vegetable consumption to make up that 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrates that participants were allowed to eat. The Mediterranean diet was, of course, also focused on unsaturated fats from olive oil and fatty fish and nuts and low intakes of red meat and generally of saturated fats. Carbohydrates were whole grains, vegetables, legumes, and fruits. Oh, also one more thing. If we pull up the data again on the arthritis symptoms themselves, I'd just like to point out that the effect size is pretty tremendous, something like a 50% reduction, which is also possibly why such a small sample size was able to detect a difference. But it's still a small study and the majority of the participants were women. So what can we take away from this study? Well, this randomized controlled trial indicates a ketogenic diet likely unsaturated fat focused is superior to a Mediterranean diet for massively reducing psoriatic arthritis symptoms and inflammation in overweight middle-aged individuals suffering from psoriatic arthritis. If this holds up in other studies, this is a really impressive result. You know, something that really bothers me about all this is the fact that we're at the end of the video and you haven't checked out this upcoming video here. We should keep hanging out over there. Thanks for joining. See you over there.